segment of your life, a portion of the whole, a slice out of your walk, that's all we have to tell. A long and narrow road, a steep and dusty path, a dark foreboding way, your share of this is felt, your This is about a guy. I met him about a month ago and I think he really likes me. And for some reason I can't handle that. Yeah, my mates at school were good blokes, don't get me wrong. But with my 2020 hindsight, I can see now that they were, well, you know, tryhards. See, we keep seeing ourselves the way the world sees us. Or maybe it's not even that, maybe it's the way that we think the world wants to see us. and I'm packing again. It's something that happens regularly in my life. There's lots of reasons why, but this time I just have to get out.
music box. <laughs> I find it every time. I've had it since I was a little kid. And every time I open the lid, she's still there, spinning and spinning and spinning. All those dreams, all the possibilities, where did they go? is a good place to start. My family weren't the happiest in the world. Oh, pithy. <laughs> and we'll get to that. But every year we would have a holiday at the beach and I was free. <laughs> I don't know what this one's called, but the day I found it, I met my best friend. The sun was high above the sea Her first year of school had been a little cruel She climbed up the grassy sandy dunes When she was at the beach There was one thing she would do Keep spinning, 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 spinning My darling this life is beautiful, keep spinning, 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 my darling, be free to dance. Hey. One day in the middle of this daily routine, a girl named Shelly walked in upon the scene. Embarrassed and a little shy, Abby stopped her dance. It might have been quite awkward if the new girl hadn't said, Hi, my name is Shelly, do you want to be my friend? We can run and dance and play, our days will never end. Do you want to sleep over? I live just down the road. We're having fish and chips tonight, come, come over, over if you want. Oh, we can keep spinning, 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 my darling. This life is beautiful, keep spinning, 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 my darling. Be free to dance, yeah. When I was with Shelley, I felt like I could just be a kid again and enjoy life. 
Ah, oh, you've got a bucket on your head. <laughs> Shelly's family would take me to Sunday school. If you put shells in the offering bag, <laughs> it sounds like money. <laughs> when I was at home, I always had to keep mum and dad happy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> my report cards. It was so good, but I was so scared. Memories are not fantasies that play out in each of our minds. They wake up and they shake up. Emotions that we left behind Once there was a family A house, a mommy, a daddy A little girl with a little curl Who went by the name of Abby This is their story Mummy, I'm so excited. Look here, I got my report card today. I'm over the moon. My teacher at school says one day I could be a doctor. Look here in maths and A minus. What kind of doctor fails subjects like that? Don't be a twit. Your teacher's a git. No wonder she earns peanuts for wages.
my storybooks. Pretty pictures, fantasies of what life should be. Well, this is my story. There once was a beautiful princess named Abby, who lived in the highest room in the highest tower in all the land. She lived there with her mother. No, she was guarded by a hag. No, she was trapped by an evil witch. <laughs> now her mother, sorry, the evil witch, would often set little tests for Abby. Today, you must clear the stable floor using a toothbrush. Your toothbrush. Today, you must clear the forest using nothing but a dessert fork. Today, I require the eyelash of a Tibetan snow wolf. Get me one, or there'll be no supper. Well. Abby found these tasks rather difficult as she was guarded in a tower. She would often ask the shriveled mute dwarf who lived under a rock in her garden for help. She would say, shriveled mute dwarf, can you help me? And he would invariably answer, <laughs> Oh, he was useless. Well, one day, after hearing of Abby's beauty and remarkable talents, a prince arrived at the base of the tower. <gasps> oh, Abby, dear Abby, I have come to liberate you. <gasps> liberate me? Well, uh, not in the feminist sense of the word. <sighs> I've come to set you free from your tower, from the treacherous witch. Well. Abby would have liked to go with the prince, but the evil witch used reverse psychology to make Abby stay. Oh, a fine. You go with the prince, I'll be fine on my own. <laughs> so Abby ignored the prince, and the prince, feeling rejected, rode slowly off into the sunset alone. Well, more princes came. There was Gavin, Bradley, Cecil, and Stuart. <laughs> no. And one by one, Abby would ignore their offer of help and freedom, choosing instead the safety and seclusion of her tower. One day, from her chamber, Abby heard a fierce argument between the witch and the dwarf. She, she'd never heard the dwarf answer back like this before. There was banging and cr crashing, and when Abby looked out her window, she saw the formerly mute dwarf scuttle off into the woods. Mummy, where is my daddy? This morning I saw him with bags in his hand. He walked out the door. He's not back yet, I'm sure. Was it something I did? Was it something I said? I can't wait to see him again. And that was it. I never saw him again. He gave me this music box and whenever I look at it, it reminds me of how I used to spin on the beach. And now I'm nearly 30. And no matter how many times I move house, I'm never free. I'm just more and more closed up. This, this is about a guy. I met him about a month ago and I think he really likes me. And for some reason, I can't handle that. Having to perform for someone again, having to earn their approval, feeling trapped and feeling vulnerable. 
when she sees him walk towards the well, she is captivated, but terrified. Oh, stop, she thinks. Don't walk towards me. But in that moment, he looks directly at her, and she feels her trapped soul convulse as his dark brown eyes read her life. He asks for water. Oh, yes, of course, water. He has obviously traveled and is thirsty. He asks for her husband. Get my husband. She trips over her mind, clumsy. This is not expected. And she hears her numb reply, I have no husband. The words break over her like a wave. There is an impasse, a stopping of time, as he gently tells her that she is right. She has had five husbands, and her present partner is no husband at all. Her soul is bare. Her box little life is prized open, and her emptiness is so apparent. I'm so trapped in my attempts to feel loved, to, to feel accepted, I've hardened my heart and packed away my soul, pushed away love after love until now I, I can't let anyone in. I'll give you water, he says, interrupting her spinning thoughts. Water? I've got water and he doesn't even have a bucket. But the water he gives is life itself. It's cool and refreshing, and it is forever. One drink, one quenching sip is all that is needed, and her soul is alive. She revels in it, splashing it on her face. She giggles like a little girl, and she understands. He is saving her. Her lifetime of hurt and torment, of searching for acceptance, of trying to win approval, it is all washed away with his water, his life. So that's it. You're leaving? Were you even going to tell me? I've been your best friend for 25 years. And I feel like I hardly know you at all. You were just going to leave. I'm sorry, Shelley. I can explain. Oh, can you? The same thing happens every time. You've had some really lovely guys in your life, but you push them away. You push me away. You've got to learn to let people in. Oh, well, there's the problem. See, at home, I learned to keep people out, to be strong, to be self-sufficient. Oh. How's that working out for you? You're getting harder and harder. You used to be happy, free. Do you remember the way you used to giggle in Sunday school? Do you remember the way you used to spin on the beach? Do you even know God anymore? <laughs> yes, I do. I pray about this stuff all the time. Oh, well, I don't think you're letting him in either. Maybe you're right. He can help you. He can help you forgive your parents and forgive yourself. It wasn't your fault. Shelley, you always say that. That's because it's true. Just stop running. Just let him in. I've tried all kinds of running, even flying at night. But in the end, it seems pointless and futile. And I'm tired.
Okay, so it's a bit of a weird name, and no, my mum and dad aren't hippies or anything, so just get over it, right? <laughs> nah. I've been doing a lot of thinking and, well, yeah, changing lately. See, stuff's happened over the past few years, and I've kind of fallen on my feet. <laughs> After trying to compete with my mates, trying to, trying to be like them and, and be respected by them, I've realised that they have as many, if not more, hang-ups as me. Cool, huh? <laughs> I know exactly where I belong now I'm bound by grace It didn't take that long to believe I found my place I know exactly where I belong now I've run that race It's given to me I found my place I know exactly where I belong now I'm bound by grace 
grace It didn't take that long to believe I found my place I know exactly where I belong now tools and nearly burst my bubble but now I've got me a purpose and a drive I party rock the house until it fell down I finally seen the lights turn me around now I have found I belong sitting with the father waiting for the guidance he has offered for free I belong living Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but with my 2020 hindsight, I can see now that they were, well, you know, tryhards. <laughs> but they each had their own unique style, and I admired them so much. <laughs> you were cool and wherever they sat at the front or the back rest assured the chicks they would draw the first of our crew was called rob and although he was sometimes a slob he could pull in the babes take his pick of the faves he was the casting over of our mob what you yeah. i wanna be with my mates no girl in meetings got good and i hope to take their place Sink a drink till it cracked. He was a big party lover, no doubt. And then there was Troy, he's the boss. A rolling stone, no sign of moss. He would live in a van if he failed an exam. You know he really wouldn't give a toss. I wanna be with my mates. No family camping trip could ever hope to take their place. I wanna be. I wanna be with 
with my mates. I wanna be 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 with my mates. What are you up to? Where's the yeah, other please. one? Wait, boys. You boys, need boys, your chair. Out, 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 out. I need a chair. Beep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> unlucky. Sit down. Unlucky. Try though, man. Absolutely. Okay, so biology one classroom. Day, Take off. a seat. Sorry, miss. Not uh, the yes. ball. No. Open. Keep it down. Uh, keep what down, miss? <laughs> the noise, Mr. <laughs> Testosterone. Now, almost dread <laughs> to commence our next topic. That of the reproductive system. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi, boys. I got a good one, right? What am I? What am I? A uterus. Get it? Oh, the fun one. Fallopian tubes. Thank you, Troy. Like, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Valid, you're unusually quiet amongst the crowd today. Pensive, man. Contemplative. He doesn't get it. He Shut doesn't. Rob, if you're not going to use your brain, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. But at least let someone else have a go. Uh, yes. I miss. There was a uh, mention last week of a um, film. Yes. Oh, yes. Where's the yes. film? We will be watching a film. But first, we're going to set a few ground rules. Oh, but miss, I, uh, I hardly know you. <laughs> Biology and its study, as I've mentioned numerous times before, is inherently bound up with the issues of ethics. For example... Ethics? What do they have to do with sex? Ethics. Troy. You talk about the genetics and issues of splicing, cloning, engineering arise. You talk about the brain and issues of education, environment, intelligence, collective mental health abound. You talk about the reproductive system, as many of you do, and issues of sexual conduct. Behaviour, social implications, they're all part and parcel. Gentlemen, if you're going to party, put your hat on. I <laughs> get <laughs> Not exactly my point, oh, victim of the machine. My point is we can talk about, watch films about, yes. and learn about the reproductive system, but unless we take some responsibility for it, there really is no point in continuing. No, 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 no continue, on, continue. On. Do the lecture and then the yeah. film. Yes. Sex. <laughs> Class is a gift. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it serves an important and necessary biological function to reproduce, but it's also designed to be pleasurable for both parties. Gentlemen, if you're going to party, put Thank your you, hat yeah. on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but we are constantly barraged by this notion of the instant hero. Social rank, stripes on your shoulder, if you like, that sex and sexual experience brings. Boys, <laughs> it's a pop culture beat up. It's a lie. Sex is best, it's most valuable, it's most pleasurable when it's saved for one person. What? You mean by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> by yourself, man, it's exactly what no. you No! <laughs> Save it for someone who you marry. Someone for whom it can be a gift and not some dirtied up paper bag you hold some cheap flowers in. All right, that's it with the lecture. Let's just watch the film. Yes. <laughs> Finally, man. Give you some room, give you some room.
I had a piece, a piece of sticky tape that was given just to me. It was small, neat, clean, and it indeed was very sticky. I would often admire it for its simple beauty, and I knew that one day I wanted to use it on something special, because it was the only piece of sticky tape that I had. Then I used it, just quickly, just for one night, to hold a memory to my sleeve. But when the night was over, and I removed the tape, I'd found that it lost some of its stick. I used it again, a while later, on another memory, and again, when I removed it, more of the stick was gone. It was dirty. Then I met a special memory, one that I wanted for life. But when I went to use my tape, it had lost all of its stick. It was just tape. Lost a part of me I didn't even know that I had. I gave it all away, I know I'll never get it back. She meant the world to me, I felt my head go over my heels. Now I can't talk to her, can't even tell you just how it feels I'm rolling, I'm falling in way too deep I drank in the lies and the world's deceit I gave up my all she said she had up all, but now I've taken a fall, and I lost a part of me. I never forgot Rob's words. I mean, this was such a change. All of a sudden, he wasn't the, the cavalier, know-it-all sex god. He was kind of hollowed out, stony-faced, and even jaded-looking. He recovered quickly enough, of course, and I'm not saying he became a stoic hippie loner or anything like that, but he changed for good. Well, changed forever. I never had the same view of Rob. It, it was weird, I don't know. It's like I no longer looked up to him or something. The girl he'd had a crush on split. Never saw her again. Well, oh, except for a, a few years later at a party. <laughs> Jump cut. Final year uni. This party was gonna change my life. I was sure of that. I just never realised how much. It's such a party, we survived another tedious year. We're just beginning or we're halfway through and that's why we're here. Some of these will be architects and doctors or vets. We're looking forward to the pleasure of paying our pets. We're rolling, we're falling, we're way too deep. We're drinking the lights and the world's deceit. We're given our all, so we're having our fault now. We're taking our fault, trying to set us free. And don't forget you're taking us home Hey mate, I'm fine And here's the stuff that led you to mine Hey, hey mate, I'm fine The doctor said it's good for me bone We might eat up the house until it fell down Then Sean told Rob that they were hitting the town And then they were Oh, 
I'm rolling, I'm falling, I'm in too deep. I drank in the lies and the world's deceit. I gave up my all and I had me a ball, but now I, I lost it all and I will never be again. Rob was a complete mess after the accident. <laughs> Spent about eight months semi-comatose with all sorts of complications. <sighs> now he speaks like a punch-drunk boxer, not to chicks in a seedy bar. <sighs> he can't even hold a spoon. <sighs> Sean's funeral hit us way too hard, I mean. Half the congregation was still hung over from the party. It's like slapping his mum in the face. And as for Troy, well, he was stuffed. And it's funny, you know, because I always looked up to Troy, like he was my idol, like a, like a big brother to me. I always thought he was so cool and that, he, that he'd sail on through anything. But two days after Sean was buried, Troy phones me up. Hey, Ballard. I'm screaming hurt. I'm forcing voice. I'm holding my cracking chest together with short breath and sweaty palms. Hey, Troy. I need a friend. I need companionship. I need a blood brother who I can be honest with and cry with. I'm off. I'm running. I'm scared. I'm barely containing linear thought and my brain is so scrambled it could explode. Where to? Don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't fail me. Don't leave me stranded and alone. You're my hero. You're my friend. England? Canada, Bali, Tokyo, Calcutta. Anywhere I won't see him or you or anyone from this life. Take care. Don't go, don't go. I'd say more, I'd plead, I'd beg, I'd cry. But you might scorn me or think I was a skirt. Time, mate. It's over. This life, these memories. I'll never write, never call, never visit. I will be as a ghost in your dreams. Troy, I want to tell you. It was always hyperbole with Peter. His three enthusiastic assurances, his three flat denials, his three Absolute promises. What a whirlwind the last few weeks had been, and what a journey they were now on. It seemed like only yesterday they were eating and drinking, and Peter had boldly promised to follow Jesus to the ends of the earth. They were soaring, flying. Jerusalem loved them and adored Jesus, and Peter was right there in the thick of it, the new leader's right-hand man. Maybe not always on the inside or the fastest to pick up on the meaning of things, but right there for once in his life. Up until then, it had always felt like he was being stuck out on lakes or being the butt of jokes. But Jesus had called him the rock. Yeah, that was cool. The rock, not fast, but solid. But then what kind of rock crumbles at the questions of a servant girl? What kind of rock denies his dearest friend? Had he just been trying to fit in, to follow the crowd again and be cool and popular? Again, hyperbole. From the dizzying heights of social success to the darkest chasms of guilt in one night, it was enough to make him sick. And then came the confusion, days of pointless staring at empty, churning stomachs. And then the ride had continued, right when rumour and conjecture was at its height, there he was cooking fish beside the lake, easy as you please, and speaking oh so gently to Peter. 
Three times Peter had denied, and now he was given three more chances to once more promise his life to be God's rock, to not be swayed by the power or popularity of mere men, to not be concerned by the thoughts of others around him. He'd found God in Jesus. He'd found his center and his purpose. He was going to live for him, and he was going to die for him. Now that's hyperbole. Did you ever feel that everything you tried to do was haunted by a history that laughs last? Or did you ever get the funny little itching that the future's kind of bended around the past? Did you ever push that notion till it busted and you got an ending different from the start? I kind of feel that I've been blessed with a revival that I don't deserve because I'm not that smart. I belong sitting with the Father waiting for the guidance He has offered for free. I belong living with the Maker using what He's given because He's given to me. My name's Kat, and just for something a little bit different tonight, um, we've got a whole show about me. Now, this is actually a pretty big thing, because I'm normally pretty shy and pretty embarrassed and don't actually like talking about myself, because, I mean, well, who does? But that's what the last couple of days have been about. I've learned so much about me. Me is, well, kind of cool. Me can be a bit of a dork, but... That's cool too. I spend my life looking in the mirror, never satisfied, spend every day hunting. A wreck. The more I try to be me, I never was. Don't waste your life on fairy tales. The lies of fortune always fails. You'll be more satisfied if you just be yourself. I realize that my Jesus loves me, and I'm surprised at how that makes me feel. My laugh make me feel so dumb and insecure. And if I try to change, I feel like such a fake. Don't chase up someone else's dreams. You're in bright open at the seams. Just look to God and find that plan in your heart.
And this is what I've learned. We don't see ourselves the way Jesus sees us. <laughs> Jesus sees us. Um, we see ourselves the way the world sees us. Um, I know, we see ourselves the way we think the world sees us. Or maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's the way that we think the world wants to see us. It's like, instead of looking in a mirror, which would be so much easier, we try to look at our reflections through our friends' mirrors. Do you know what I mean? joining me they want to let you know about their secret of beauty and of love you did so well jenny please tell me what's your secret shop that's out of your price range step out of the target scene and step into a magazine to look nice to be rich sorry cats that's my
sounds like a secret, doesn't it? Everyone seems to know how to get it all together, except for you. It was like when I was Darling, at... we do have it all together. Yes, Kat, you're really quite astute to have realised that you're lacking... In all sorts of areas! <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing! Nothing. Scat! <laughs> we really are here to help you, darling! Help me? Mm. How? Well, you need some work, sweetheart. I mean, your personality's a huge issue, but uh, let's just start with um, the way you look. That's what we're good at. You just keep thinking of us as your friends from school. But we're so much more than that. Hey, baby, learn all our names. I'm fashion, I'm face. And honey, I'm frame. We're the hardest of the hardest in all of this world. Get to know us, baby, we're your own vice girls. So, baby, go to town. Be the body, baby, everybody wants to be around. Yeah, honey, take the ride. On the level, rubber, why the devil should it be denied? So, baby, go to Baby, lift that face, where your guides to be an ace. Top of the class, no, top of the grade. You'll be a hit, don't be afraid. We'll find you the fame you seek. To the friend, to the eye, the fine physique. To see it, work it, own the plan. You're not complete without a man. So baby, go to town. Be the body, baby, everybody wants to be around. Those threads, the ditch that blew for scarlet red. Gotta know the fashion, gotta know the show. Our dead designer's the way to go. Italian, even French is she. A studded tongue is in this wig. Airbrush nails enhance those claws. And then we'll fix that face of yours. So baby, go to
English enough. You guys don't have to rub it in. Leave me alone, you pack of Captain. I don't want you around. I don't need you around. Just leave. Fine. Fine. Scat. As I look at me in a dirty, dusty glass and wipe my hands through the filth, my eyes catch the streaks across her face. Her face that stares cracked and dull, empty and searching back at me, hunting me and scanning my features. What? she queries. What? Again. Why are you drilling me with those deep and probing eyes of aesthetic criticism? I'm scared and found and pull away from my stare. I'm lost in dingy tiles and mouldy grout. But she's behind me. I'm behind me. I'm lost, she whispers. I'm here, I answer. Our hands complete an impossible loop, connecting me and her, and our faces meet. Look at me, she pleads. Look at me, I retort. I'm hurt and tired and she begins to cry. You're beautiful, I say, and my words trail off. You're designed, she thinks, and I'm quite surprised that I understand and hear her thought. And I'm still at last, complete at last. Designed, she repeats. Designed, I echo. I touch her face. It's clean and right. Her hair and skin and eyes are where they should be. And so is mine. She just wanted to belong, to be noticed for her smile or her sense of humour or her deep brown eyes and to be accepted, welcomed. Instead, she was shunned, pushed aside, but not even pushed because someone would have had to touch her to do that. She was repelled by searing looks and icy shoulders. Every woman had to put up with her curse, but for them, it was just a monthly inconvenience, a few days at home with the possible company of daughters or sisters. But for her, it was constant, continual and relentless and totally lonely. It was not just a period, it was an age. The physical knots of pain were nothing compared to the stink of rejection. It made her unbearably timid, which is why she wouldn't even dare to look directly at Jesus, let alone talk to him. If she could reach him through the swarming crowd, it would be enough. She'd watched from a safe distance and heard enough stories to believe totally that he could rescue her and not just heal her physically, but restore her self-esteem, even her beauty. And he did. He stopped the bleeding, that incessant leaking of life and worth eased and sealed. No pain, no aching. It was like life flowing back into her eyes and heart. And she even had the momentum of excitement to admit her audacity to the teacher. And he blessed her in front of everyone. But refreshingly, and surprisingly, she didn't actually care what everyone thought anymore. She just wanted to follow her saviour. That's where she belonged.
just how much you're worth He will always love you And He will never leave you All He ever wanted was for you to love about me. I don't have to be scared of it. Like I said at the beginning, me is, well, pretty cool. And in seeing me the way Jesus sees me, Jesus sees me, um, I've been able to see the true beauty that he's placed in me. And he did place that in me. He's known me from the very beginning, even before the show started. searched me and you have found me. You know when I'm working and when I'm resting and at every moment what is on my mind. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are intimate with all I do. And before I have uttered a word, you know what I will say. I go into the voids of space, you are there. If I sink into the deepest chasms of the ocean, you are there. If I fly into the sunset on a Concord, if I move to another country, you are there. Even there you will guide me. Your tender hands will hold me securely.
I've realized that I am me. God created me to be the way I am and to look the way I am with my own set of situations and possibilities. Yeah, and in him, I found my place, my purpose. Not trying to be like the others around me, but discovering who God wants me to be. And how important it is to love those around me with the love that God has given, his perfect love. He cares for us, he cares for we 